Benvenuti a Donnybrook. Bienvenue a Donnybrook. Welcome in bon- Donnybrook. Meta baza mau ya ku Donnybrook. Daja hao, eh huani wo men zhe bian Donnybrook de bisai. Hello, welcome to Donnybrook. Welcome to Donnybrook. Indeed, welcome to Donnybrook. It's 2023 and it's the Better Bands Petroleum Summer Series. And the first show, we're going to be checking out all the action from the incredible Supercross circuit that's been put together for two nights of racing here in Harare. Big sponsors behind the scenes that have ensured that almost 35 international riders have joined us. And behind the scenes, it was Joe that got them here. We've got some really highly pedigreed uh, riders with us. We've got uh, Maxime Dupre, who just uh, won the French Supercross, and he also got his first uh, podium at the World Supercross in Abu Dhabi with us three weeks ago. We've got Tamar Ramet, who's a top uh, French rider. We've got Pierre Goupillon, world champion, uh, elite champion France as well. We've got the two or three really good guys from uh, Ben Franklin and uh, Adam Chatfield, one of the veteran guys as well, uh, from the USA. Uh, we've got uh, Ryan uh, Surat, and Austin Black, both professional riders. We've even got the Chinese and the Japanese motocross champions with us as well uh, in um, Ladlow, who's based in Australia, also pro, races in China. And then Brian Su, who's also multiple European world champion, just recently won the Italian Supercross SX2 championship, uh, the Japanese motocross championship, and he's off to the States. I think for the tourism, it's incredible because the, the amount of comments we're getting on social media is just phenomenal. And then the most important thing, I think, is, is to bring the level in Southern Africa up to European stands in terms of technique, the way they ride, the way they set up, their prep, the professionalism they bring to racing. I think it's also great just for the guys to mix with everybody. We can safely say at this stage that Zimbabwe is now on the international motocross circuit. No doubt about that. That's why all these people have come out to watch the action. Another man behind the scenes is none other than the Desert Fox himself, Alfie Cox. With this momentum that's been gained at the moment now with better brands and uh, putting the money behind this whole lot, I think we're really going to see it uh, grow uh, bigger and bigger for next year. So yeah, it's it's just a great three nights of racing and one day on the outdoor. Uh, But yeah, hats off to them. Everybody rallies around and gives it a go. And it's lovely to see the 50 kids 65 kids, 85s, and then obviously the big boys. So yeah, great show to them, and I just believe it's uh, it's good for our sport. Great to see the youngsters getting a chance as well in the Pee Wee 50 class. Benji Morgan setting the whole shot, followed very closely there by O'Neill Shumunyara, and then a great effort coming out of Zach Mitchell as well, putting the pressure on right from the word go. Ebenezer Parcel was in there as well, but it was Benji Morgan taking the victory. Whatever happens, there's $40,000, US dollars prize money for the event. And these guys are going to give it their all. Uh, I've seen many a Supercross uh, races, and tonight there's going to be action like nobody's seen before. Welcome back to 2023 Summer Series, proudly brought to you by Better Brands Petroleum and all the associate sponsors behind this event. Big crowds have joined us here at Donnybrook. It's exactly what they're expecting to see. We heard from Grant Foley just before the break saying that there's going to be epic Supercross action and we're going to kick things off with the 50ccs. Tim say on the inside gate is the man to watch because he's the European champion. Around the outside, though, a fantastic start coming out of Judah Sakabonunya. An amazing start from him, but it's Tim right on his tail. Riley Kaldanais, the South African champion, not getting the start he wanted. Look at him, dropping right to the back of the pack. So Kaldanais with a little bit of issues there right from the start. Looks like that bike might not be firing like he wants it to, but certainly no issues at all there for the man out front. The Frenchman doing a super job. Fraser starting to make his way through there as well. Cam Fraser is definitely a man to watch out for. Might give Judo a run for his money up for the second spot on the podium. And the two of them now fighting hard as they go around this incredibly well-prepared Supercross track. 1-1-6 out there as well. Cam Morgan in the mix. And at the back of the pack starting to come through pretty quickly is Michael Krauser. He's made his way up into the top three, so not a bad effort there from Krauser. He's certainly a man looking for an opportunity to be on that podium. But the top step of the podium is going to go to Timata. He wins out. Tudor comes through for second place, and it's a good run there from Grauser. He just squeezes out in the last corner to come through there and beat out the hard-charging Riley Heldenace. He eventually got up to fourth place after a poor start for the South African. And there was Krauser right on his tail with Tyler West, Cam Morgan, Keegan Omerod, and Zach Mitchell making up the top nine. Crowd continued to pack their way into the Donnybrook Stadium for the Supercross, and looks like there might have been a small issue there on Riley Heldenace's bike. It didn't go well because the bike kept bogging, and but I still did good. 
the Dio Sakabunya looking for a good ride in the 65s. So today I'm here for the first race, first day of Summer Seas 2020, 23, I think one of the biggest events I'm actually, I've, do, I've done after FIM, of course. I'm gonna be doing 65 CCs and I can't wait to, to get onto the track and ride. I think there's a lot of 65cc riders itching to go as well. They'll be standing by in the gates as they drop. We're under floodlights for the first time and into turn one. Who's going to get the whole shot? Oh, a massive crash down into turn one there. Rider going down, losing the front end and uh, looks like might be right, dropping right to the back of the pack. Just trying to pick up who that rider was. Looks like it was the 99. Yeah, Leo Eastcroft just going down there in turn one. Trying to get up and you can see he's a little bit sore. It's going to be a battle of the uh, international boys at the front end. Tomeo and Timotei. We've already seen Timotei say in the 50 cc's and how dominant he was. But it looks like it's at this stage the Zimbabwean leading things out. Kudzwa Shichizwara getting a fantastic start and leading comfortably at the moment in front of his home crowd. He's certainly going to be a firm favourite amongst the crowd and the supporters are here in their droves to give the Zimbabweans and Southern Africans all the support they need. But the pressure is coming from behind and it's starting to be felt big time. Alroy Shimonwara in there as well. Another good start from another one of the Zimbabweans. Let's keep an eye and see how it's happening there. Jaden Kerwin, also another Zimbabwean in the mix there too. But all of a sudden, they're starting to get to the front end. And Timotese is there as well. And check out the move coming out of Tamayo Moring. Tamayo Moring is absolutely cutting through this field rapidly. Looks like he might have hit the front. He has. And it's side by side there with Timotese. The two of them literally bar to bar as they head towards the closing stages of this one. Block pass there from Tamayo. Looks like he might just hang on and over the line. Yeah, look at that. Brilliant stuff. They're not going to give this up without a fight. The 499 is the man to catch. Timoteo Say is there. And Shinsunawara fighting hard with the two international boys. So it's local versus international here. But it looks like a little bit of a gap gained on those last couple of laps. And yes, Timoteo comes through for an easy victory in the end. Kudwa taking second place. And Timoteo making it up into third. Good running there from Chris Mafani Chia. Doing a super job ahead of Victor Yamaka Kudzwa and Alroy Shimonara there as well. Seb Wright, Jaden Kerwin, Carl Collette and Matisse. It's, it's pretty fun, pretty hard and pretty... What's the other word? Anxious. It uh, gives you an anxious feeling. Hi guys, I'm Ricardo Bauer. I was last year in the 65cc Austria uh, a European champion and vice champion. And I'm here at Donnybrook, really hyped for it, thanks to all my sponsors. And the most thanks goes to Scott that he made this event for us to have fun with other guys from other countries. And thank you, Scott. It is fantastic to have all the international riders here at Summer Series 2023. And yes, a big thanks to Scott and the uh, Better Brands Petroleum, but also a big thanks to all the associate sponsors. Check this out, though. Is that a South African going for the whole shot? It is. What a move on the inside there. Cabello Ladwaba, king of the whole shots again. King Cabello out front. He's been amazing since his first trip here last year to uh, Donnybrook. In the Supercross, he wasn't quite up for it last year, but he certainly is up for it tonight. He is flying high and leading the pack. Right on his tail, though, is the other South African, Trent Valsecki. So the two of them now flying the flag high there for Southern Africa. Let's see what's happening a little bit further back there. Where is Ricardo Bauer? We just chatted to him. Oh, there he is. He's right on their tail. So Bauer looking to try and close things down there and look out for Ferez Kenzo as well. Another one of our international prospects fighting now with the two Southern Africans. Small mistake there. Oh, that could be costly. As they're dropping in there, you can see the four riders now evenly matched at the front end of this field. Camilo Ladwaba still leads out. Can he keep it all together now? It's not going to be an easy ride, that is for sure. And you can see the track starting to rut up nicely. It's getting real super cross out there. That's how it goes. Through the back in the pack there. We just saw uh, Basile Bigois coming through as well. Another one of the Frenchmen doing a super job here for the international prospects. But it is an epic battle in the 85cc's. This is heat number two here. Can you believe this? A couple of different lines there being used by the riders. You can see through that little step-up section. There's an inside line and outside line. Some of them preferring the outside line as the quicker line to use. And it seems to be working really nicely so far for uh, Cabela Ladwaba. But he's been closed down rapidly now by Valsecchi and by Ferez Kenzo. Kenzo is on a big, big charge here. Definitely looking to close things down. Bowers dropped back slightly. Looks like he might have had a small issue on the circuit. So it's the top three fighting hard. And Bauer in fourth place, just ahead of Basile. Lucas Colette out there as well. William Krauser and Junior Bucco. Bucco didn't quite get the start he wanted. He's got a lot of support. Slower rider. That's Bauer again. Yeah. Oh, Ricardo Bauer just battling with a bike that just seems to be cutting out on him all the time. He's him trying to kickstart that machine to get it going again. We'll have to have a check that out in uh, the pit lane after the seat to see if they can get it back up and firing like it should do. 
Here we go, heading towards the closing stages. This 85 cc has been an amazing battle. Eventually, Cabela de has been caught and passed. But only just by oh, Valsecchi going at it. It's a block pass going to be tried here by Cabello. He goes inside. Valsecchi's outside that touch. And he goes down. Cabello and Edouard are touching Valsecchi to the line. It was the last corner. It was do or die. One of them had to try it. And unfortunately, just a clip of the handlebars there. And the king goes down. So it's Valsecchi who gets the win. Ferez Kenzo comes through for second. Cabello still hangs on for third. Beating out Ricardo Bauer. Basile Piguá there in fifth. The head of Lucas Collet. Krauser, Bacco, Nunn and Carl Vanas there in 10th place. Yeah, for the 85, the track's really rough and nice. Nice bumps somewhere and nice ruts. And I really liked it to ride here in Africa the first time. And I never rode a Supercross race, so it was really fun in the night. A busy man in the saddle this evening is Ricardo Bauer. He's in the 85s and in the 125s. And let's get ready now for the first heat of action that we're going to pick up here. It's race two of the 125s. The Brat Pack in the house and heading towards turn one. Is it going to be Emile Crusade looking for a chance to get through there? He has a big look on the inside, but round the outside. Was that Jordan van Beek? Yes, it was. He's got 747 on that number plate. That means he's going like a Boeing. He's going to be a tough man to beat. Crusade in the mix there. Already starting to push hard and you can see he's there with Nicolas Clamart, another one of his French rivals. He spends a lot of time with him internationally as well as here in Zimbabwe. That's great to have his good friends here fighting hard. Tariq Shelton is up into second place though. And he's looking to try and run with the South African out front. But Jordan van Vake just showing the rest of the field a clean pair of wheels there to get away. Up into the Isuzu corner now and over the start finish line and the tabletop that finishes the race. It's a brilliant, brilliant finish this because it's right in front of that massive grandstand. And it is packed to the rafters now. You can see all around the track, there are just people lining the track and seeing exactly what Supercross is all about. It's great to see that. $5 to get in. It's certainly worth every single cent that they've paid to come and watch this type of action, especially with all of these international riders. And speaking of international riders, Bauer starting to come through now. His 125 seems to be working a slightly better than the 85cc did, and he is pushing it to the limit now to try and stay with that front-end pack. Closing things down now and possibly up into third. There he goes, into third place. Yeah, well, ball bar to bar in the air. Will he eventually make it stick? I think he might have. So it's Bauer push, pushing his way through there, but Emil Crusade definitely wants to keep him out. The uh, Zimbabwean certainly wants to have an opportunity of being on the podium in front of all of his local supporters, but uh, Nicolas Clement and Ricardo Bauer are fighting hard for that third spot. And Nicola looks like he might have an opportunity here to try and have a go, possibly at uh, Tariq Shelton. Tariq Shelton going to try and keep him out, though. Up into the final corner. That is Crusade pushing it to the limit. He's up to fourth now. He's got ahead of the two Frenchmen, so certainly making his maneuver stick. But no one is going to catch this man. Jordan van Veek is definitely being the class of the field here. It's one of the first times he's ever ridden Supercross, so he's certainly taken to it like the duck to water. He's got no worries whatsoever on that 747 Ridgeway bike. Oh, Shelton. Block pass. Keeping out all the Frenchies. That's the way you do it, Tariq. All three of them right on his tail, and he just managed to just block them into the rhythm section. Coming to the line, though, it is Jordan van Beek in amongst the back markers around the high side there. Possibly, I think that might have been Jack Gobi or Josh Pike that he passed. But a nice whip over the line to whip it and finish up at the top step. It's Jordan van Beek with the victory. Tariq Shelton hangs on for second, only just to beat out Ricardo Bauer and Emil Crusay. Nicolas Clamart comes through there, beating out Basile Pigua. And Cabela Ludwaba down in seventh place. First time on a 125 rim, that's not a bad outing. Noah Reese in eighth beats out Josh Pike and Jack Gobi on your top 10 in the 125s. Hard, really good all night long. Got two whole shots in the 105, 125 class. Felt good in the MX2. Got the fourth in the first motor, which felt really good. And I just felt really good. And the, the experience here has been awesome so far. make our way into the vets and masters now the more senior riders about to go to battle they've joined the vets and masters category together there are a couple of uh, seasoned campaigners when it comes to donnybrook that are out there and they should be running at the front end look out for doug malore coming through there from the yamaha center of course one of our big sponsors here yamaha marine center and great to see him battling hard and mark zeman looks like he might have got the whole shot or possibly mark thompson it's the battle of marks out front though scotty fraser coming side by side there with the big four zero you can see just how hard they're having to push. They've got all their uh, original FIM um, Motocross of African Nations jerseys on there and different numbers on their motorcycles. So try and pick up on the right one. Dal Holiday is always an easy one to pick up on because he runs DH on the bike. Then <laughs> he wants to go with the international flavor because he comes from Zambia, of course. So, of course, he can go international. This is not his home circuit. 
So Dale Holiday in the mix there as well, looking for a chance to try and wrap things up in the Masters side of things, and he's fighting with Lofty Fasfeld. But Mark Thompson, Zeman, and it looks like it's going to be Scotty Fraser looking for a chance for the wins in the veterans. As I said, Thompson was a difficult man to beat all race weekend long. And here tonight, he seems to have just exactly what it takes. He's found a special line around this uh, Supercross track, and he's pulling away from the rest of the pack. Zeman's got no answer. Zeman had enough. a little bit of pressure there coming from Dale Holiday right in the closing stages. Look at that, trying to use that inside line and go for the block pass. And it almost worked out, but he loses a little bit of ground. Holiday continuing to circulate nicely, though, and looking to try and close down on the back end of Zeman. Fraser's just behind them. Scotty Fraser's had a fantastic evening so far as well. Lofty first felt in the background. Looks like he might get second in the Masters, but it is going to be Thompson for the overall victory, winning out over Zeman. And down in fourth place, Scott Fraser gets third in the Veterans and fourth overall. Holiday wins the Masters, beating Lofty Fasfelt and Trevor Thixton for the DNF. He'll be back on Friday night. Moving from the Vets and Masters into the ladies category. Slightly smaller field of ladies, but let me tell you something. A really, really quality field. The two Delima sisters are here. Caitlin Parks is in the mix as well, and so is Kayla Nesbitt. As they go into turn one, Leanne Young looking for a way past and just getting blocked out slightly there. And then at the back, look out for Tari Nyomakafudzwa. Nice to see there as well, the young lady rider from Zimbabwe pushing hard. Not quite the start we wanted out of Cheyenne Delima. She's a little bit slow out the gates, but uh, needless to say, the Pegasus Racing in Monster Yamaha. I'm sure will be looking to try and close her sister down if possible. Jay Dean definitely looking for a chance to be on the step, top step of the podium. But uh, at this stage, trying to close things down there and uh, stay ahead of the hard charging Caitlin Pox. Looking at the lap times, Caitlin Pox just setting the fastest lap there and closing that gap down now on the 7 7 Jay Dean Delima. So a bit of a fight on here between the two of them. It's nice to see KTM versus Yamaha in the background. There you go. Uh, looks like Cheyenne's found some uh, pace in the, the late race here. And then the battle at the back. Tari Nyamakafudzwa fighting hard there with Leanne Young. So, uh, at the front, we've got three lady riders fighting hard. And at the back end, we've got two fighting just as hard. That's exactly what the crowd want to see. But when the chicken flag came out, it was Caitlin Parks who eventually got the victory over Cheyenne Delima. And JD Delima finishing up ahead of Leanne Young, Tari Nyamakafudzwa and Kayla Nesbitt. Welcome back to Donnybrook and Supercross one night on the Wednesday. A couple of riders looking to get fired up and uh, hopefully get some uh, good results in here to score the points that uh, eventually end up being the entire points for the weekend. MX3 is in the gate and getting ready to go now. Let's see who's going to get the whole shot as they come out of that gate. It's very soft and loamy sand as you head towards turn one and looking for that whole shot. Camelor on the inside. Good effort there. He's the man to uh, beat at Bar the Looks of Things on the whole shot. But it looks like he might have just been caught there. Was that Sasha Mitchell just diving up the inside? It could possibly be a bean. He might have just stolen that whole shot away. And uh, Malor's going to have to try and come back at him if he can. As they sort things out now as they go through that rhythm section for the first time. With the back in the pack, keep an eye out on Jordan Dudney. He's definitely a man who has got some serious pace around this track. I saw it in the, the practice sessions. And he's definitely looking for a chance now to possibly be on the podium at the end of this first heat of racing that we're picking up on here from Supercross 1. Supercross 1 on Wednesday night. It is a packed set of grandstands and all around the circuit people lining the track to watch the action out front Dudney on the fly that is Mitchell as I said he just snuck through there and just kept the boys honest but here we go Cam's up for the challenge he comes side by side with Sasha Mitchell multiple SA and of course multiple Zimbabwean champion there in Sasha Mitchell but being shown the way there by Cam as he goes into the flat out section there was one other section here this is where the freestyle motocross would be happening right it down though oh big crash for Mitchell Sasha trying to close the step with the gap down there on Cam and he makes a small mistake. He's back up and riding. But Sasha Mitchell dropping back now, possibly out of that top five. Malor is the man to catch and he takes the checkered flag. Jordan Dudney in second and Dylan Zanon there for third place, beating Daniel West. Mitchell got up for fifth. Munyaradzi Batro in sixth place ahead of Kevin Morgan and Scotty Hewer, Mark Orchard and Bismarck Lamek there in tenth. We are here in Zimbabwe, awesome place, sunshine, it's warm, it's hot. And I just came from Italy, there was like minus three, you know. So he said, can I ride there? Come here to ride with sunshine, you know. So anyway, I um, just want to thanks, thank you to uh, Joe Travers and then Better Brands, you know, awesome people. Such a great experience to come here, you know. It's uh, I just, I, lo I love the wildlife here, you know, like uh, to race here too. And, uh, you know, since I was, since I've been injured for a long time. Now I just have to get back in the in the groove, you know. So it's a good training, good uh, 
uh, good racing going here and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just very happy for everything. It is a fantastic field, including Brian Zhu there, as you just heard in MX2's 33 national or international titles lined up in the gate right now, about to go to battle as they head towards turn one. Who's going to have the whole shot? Looks like the 5-7 on the inside. What a move there from Pierre Goupillon. Yes, indeed. First time out on a Supercross track and he whole shots. He's never ridden Supercross before and Goupillon is just eating up this field. Good start from Austin Black as well. The American is in there and it looks like there might be a little bit of uh, maneuvering through the field there as well from Manziga Hugo and look out for uh, Jackson Hadlow. Jackson Hadlow, the other... Oh, he says Chinese, Japanese uh, champion, but of course he comes out of Australia and Hadlow is on a huge charge right from the word go. He's not going to hold back here at all, neither any of the field, in fact. This is an epic start to an MX2 fight here and one of the most classic fields we've seen ever at Summer Series. Action packed, as I said, 33 championships that are uh, basically on track at the moment and pushing it to the limit. And trying to come through there as Brian Zou. He didn't get the start he wanted. He uh, got stuck slightly in about fourth or fifth place coming out of turn one. But he's slowly but surely making his way through. Inside line from Austin Black. Outside line coming out of uh, Hugo. And then just behind that is Zou. Brian Zou is absolutely hauling at the moment. Look at that. Look at the way he comes down into Suzu. Running high and wide onto that. Hardly even touching the brakes and sliding the bike through the berm. He's now up to possibly fourth place at the moment. We're going to close down and get past on uh, Black. As he puts the pressure on, you can see it's going to be a big, big maneuver to get through here. And that's the kind of maneuver you have to make. Oh, oh Zhu showing the type of experience he's got when it comes to the sp sport of Supercross and showing Diane Manuel the way around his own home track. We spoke about D and uh, how awesome he is. And, of course, he's always a man to watch out for here on his home circuit at the Summer Series. But Diane Manuel is now having to fight hard amongst a huge field of international contingents. As they come through, completes another lap. It's Zoo up into the top three now. Can he find a way past Pierre Guppion and past Austin Black? That's the question everybody's got on their minds at the moment. The way that he's going right now, though, doesn't look like it's going to be too much of an issue. Inside line from him on the flat out straight away. And can he get around the outside, heading up in towards there? Oh, oh, oh we see his dirt as they roost coming out of that right-hander. He's now side by side through the whoop section. This is where he made the overtaking maneuver. Two different lines, as you can see through there. And Zoo is now looking for a way through on Black. Can Black hold him off? Only just for now. Inside line. Possibilities here of an outside line from Zoo. That's exactly what he went. So inside for the step up. That was uh, Austin Black. Outside line. And now over that short little level. He runs high up onto the Suzu bank and cuts it short and comes straight back at him. Gets the power down. Almost overtakes him in the air and possibly going to get him as they head towards turn one's first jump. Further back. Mlimi having a bit of a tough start to the evening there. John Mlimi. Uh, the Predator not quite on Predator form right now. But certainly a man to watch out for throughout the week. The South African is very good at the circuit. Change up a second. So it's Zoo up to second now. He's got one more rider out in front. And that is Pierre Goupillon. Can he catch him? There he is. That's the gap. Zoo's got to try and make that little gap up. Austin Black hanging on still for the three spot at this stage. Looks like he's got a clean pair of wheels there as they come through. But Goupillon is trying to hang on here for this last lap. As I said, this is the first time that Pierre's ever been out on a Supercross track. Can you imagine what he could do if he went to America? Jordan van Veek further back there, the South African, just outside of the top 10. So not quite the start he wanted, but remember, this is the first time for him on a 250. Here comes the change up for the lead. Is it going to happen? Kupion on the inside. Zoo goes high and wide. He gets the power down and run to the line. Brian Zoo, oh, on the line he gets him. Can you believe that? Brian Zoo wins it out. And it's only to the tune of about 0.2 of a second between the two of them across the line. Kupion in second, Austin Black in third, beats out Hugo and Hadlow. And Diane Manuel beats out Limi, Chatfield, Franklin, Jordan van Beek making up that top 10. Um, it went, it went uh, well, but actually um, I did a good start. But then on the straightaway I lost it because, I don't know, there was like a rut that pulled me away and then everybody just closed. And so I always had to start from mid-pack and then work my way through, you know. And, uh, you know, it's hard to pass here. And... But anyway, I could still pass, and then, uh, especially in the second hit, that was really tight, you know. Just at the last, we just came together, you know. Hi, my name is Dan Thornhill, and I'm from England, and we're here at the uh, Donnybrook Park Summer Series 2023. The whole experience coming over here is pretty surreal for us. Um, we race in England mainly, and we do some European stuff, but... For us, this is a long flight and, and yeah, the, the whole trip and meeting new people and new surroundings, is it's all quite overwhelming for us at the moment. Um, 
but yeah, I'm really excited to, to get out today and ride and, and see how it all goes and, 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 and see the environment when we're out racing. MX1's the premier class now lining up, and when I tell you a premier class, 38 different champions on the line right now, including multiple Zimbabwean champion and Captain Marvel himself, Jaden Ashwell, looking for the whole shot, but it's not Ashwell that gets the whole shot. Squeezing through there was Michael Cratter. Looks like the man from Germany is going to be the man to beat in terms of the whole shot here. And he, oh, he's out of shape there big time. He lost a little bit of ground though, and that's cost him dearly from the whole shot. He's dropped down to about fourth or fifth place. Six is right up there. Rame is, wow, what a start from him. An amazing run there from Rame as he gets into the mix of it and starts to run to the front. And Maxine Dupre trying to close him down right from the word go. We heard earlier on in the show from Joe just how good Maxine is. He's come from multiple victories right up close and personal. And all of a sudden, coming into the mix as well, is another man who could be a big, big threat at the end of this one. Anthony Boudin pushing hard on the 945. The only Kawasaki out there and certainly looking to take on the rest of this pack. He's made his way up. He's got through on Rame by the looks of things. Yes, he has. And he's moved to the front end. Crater dropping back slightly. Further back there, Josh Mnemi, not quite the start he wanted. Look at him having a fight in that mid-pack. There's five riders involved in that, including Jimmy Margotson and Regan Warsmith. The Warsmith is back on track. It's great to have the other Zimbabwean flying the flag high there for the local supporters. Battle rule here, of course, as Rame now hits the front again and gets back ahead of Boudin. The two of them fighting for the lead. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth place now coming through turn one as they head over that big, big tabletop heading towards the VIP section. These two boys are not holding back whatsoever. Kawasaki versus Yamaha. Inside line from the Kawasaki that might just give him the lead. Get a little bit of an advantage there. Jimmy Margotson trying to close down there on Ashwell. Yes, there you go. Confirmation of that one. The Kawasaki's back out front. Ashwell in third place at the moment looking to try and hang on to it. But he's got Kratzer, he's got Thornhill, he's got Amlini, and he's got Jimmy Margotson right on his tail. Can he hang on till the end? Looks like Anthony Boudon has got his head down and got away now slightly from Rame. And then, oh, just eating some dust there. Have some of that, Daniel Thornhill. You're talking about the uh, surreal real feeling of being in Africa? Well, there's some African dirt right into your helmet. Let me felt the feeling of that one. Not quite the best way you want to be for fighting hard for a Supercross event. Eating dirt. And that's how it goes. One lap to go, and it is the Kawasaki of Anthony Boudon who hangs on by a long margin now. Doesn't look like Rame's got an answer. Can Jaden Ashwell possibly hang on there for third place? He's got huge pressure coming from behind. And you can see it's, uh, oh, it's going to be hard. Maxine Dupre is on his tail and looking for a way to squeeze through. So is Kratzer. So the two of them are working so, so hard to get through there on the Zimbabwean. But Captain Marvel wants a podium here for his home crowd. Top step, it's going to be the Kawasaki. Boudon coming through for the win. And a heel clicker just to wrap it all up as well. Nicely done taking the victory there over Thomas Romain. And then it was uh, Maxine Dupre, Kratzer, and Jaden Nashville in the top five. 4 0 down in sixth, and Limi in seventh, Jimmy Margotson in eighth. And Regan Wasmuth beats up Manzato Hugo for top ten. Yeah, we had uh, one day of racing, and uh, I did uh, like I won the first moto and did the third in the, in the second moto. and. Uh, yeah, it went good. Uh, everything. It's nice to be to be here and uh, discover a new country. Uh, the track is good. It's uh, like some speed. We have some speed, some technical parts also. So yeah, we are enjoying with uh, all the all the guy and uh, there is again two to race to race. So yeah, it's fun. First, I'm really happy to be here and. Uh, the first night is really good for me. I, I win the I win the race, and uh, yeah, good battle with Maxime Depré, and yeah, nice track. The track is good. Welcome back to action from the Better Brands Petroleum Summer Series 2023 at Donnybrook, and uh, into the afternoon practice session for night two. A couple of guys taking a little bit of strain out there, getting the rest in after they'd been for a little bit of a safari with our sponsors getting a chance to go and see what the African bush is all about and Brian Zhu will tell you all about it. Yeah, and the safari was beautiful, you know, I, I, I've never been there before. But ye yesterday we saw elephant, giraffes and a uh, lion was in the cage. Um, a few uh, few more animals, uh, rhinos. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was really nice. We saw some uh, beautiful animals for sure. We we are lucky to to be here. So yeah, we're enjoying a lot, and uh, we are thankful for the everybody is really nice with us. So yeah, it's really nice to to be here. Oh, 
The Zimbabwean Chongololos are lethal. You have to watch out for them. Let's get into the lethal action now coming from the 50 cc's. Second night of action for them. Hopefully Riley Heldenace's bike's working a bit better than what it did in the first heat. Looks like it certainly is as they head down towards turn number one. And whole shot looks like it's going to be heading towards the 50cc 300 bike. And you can see just how hard they're pushing. I saw the little 0-1 there. That's O'Neill Shimonuara coming off a of Pee Wee and getting onto a 50cc for the first time. He got a little bit out of shape but managed to hang on to it. Good bit of riding there from the young guy. He literally just fits over the motorcycle to get his feet down. So uh, if he comes off, he's going to need <laughs> outside assistance to get him back onto the motorcycle. No worries whatsoever, though, for Timoteo. Timoteo sat out front just showing the clean pair of wheels to everybody on track. There's not anybody who's really giving him any competition whatsoever. Look at the gap he's pulled there over the rest of this field. And it is a big field of very talented riders, including the 300 there of Judah. But closing down on Judah, keep an eye out on Cam Fraser. Cam Fraser has found some special, special pace here in this heat and looking for a chance now to show that he's got what it takes to put it onto the podium as well. From the back, Fraser looking for a chance now to get into second as he got through. Looks like he might have. A nice run there from the wind from Timoteo. And yes, Fraser into second place, beating Judah only by a couple of hundreds across the line. Michael Krause ahead of Riley Kildanese, the South African champion in fifth. Tyler West, Shimon Wara, and then it was Mitchell Morgan and Omarod making up the top 10. Standard option at the Summer Series. Always good to see the huge bike parade that allows all the motorcycles and a couple of billions to get out on track as well. Led out by the very hopeful Ash Thixton, man going to be representing Zimbabwe at this year's Dakar Rally. And we wish him all the very, very best. Of course, he came back with some magnificent results. But this is always good to see. Everybody getting out on track and even some of the girlfriends getting a chance to get out there as well. And there you go, even the boss lady in the house on the back end there of the Kawasaki. 65 cc's are up next. Let's see what they can do now in those gates. 15 second changes to five. About to drop the hammer and head down towards turn number one. Into turn one, looking for the whole shot. Who's going to have what it takes here around the outside? Oh, good start there from Kudzwai once again, but he just gets forced slightly wide. And there's a bit of chopping and changing rider down. One of the gas gas boys. In fact, a couple of guys going down there. That's huge. That's Timoteo Say. Oh, man, who's had second places all night long to Tamao Moring. Has dropped right to the back of the pack. And he's got a huge mountain to climb. Further back from that one was the 99. And didn't quite work out for that start either. So uh, I think that might have been Milan Mohammed, who was at the back end of the pack. They're just trying to pick that bike up and get going. Out front, though, Tameo Moring showing us what it's all about. Chris Mofunia Kudzwa up into second place at this stage. And uh, Mofunia Chia and looking like an opportunity for him to be on the podium. And this is a much better start here coming out of Chris. But Kudzwa is right there as, as well as Victor. Matisse Moring is there as well. So it looks like the two Moring boys are trying to sandwich the Zimbabweans at the front end of this pack here for the second night of Supercross Racing at Donnybrook. Timoteo, though, coming through the field rapidly. Just showing the kind of class he's got. Oh, the leader's gone down. That is Tamao Moran crashing out, and it's going to cost him anything? No, not at all. That's the gap he had. Can you believe that? Crystal in second, and looking for a chance to come through there is Kudzwai. Kudzwai on a flyer now, looking to maybe just get ahead there of Chris, just ahead of him. And behind that, Victor and Matisse looking for a chance to make, make it up into that top five. Not too far away. Just saw in the background the 16 bike of Timoteo say... He's had an epic battle and won everything in the 50 cc's, but you can see it's not going according to plan here in the 65s. Another crash. He's just completely out of rhythm here. It's not like that rider to make mistakes like that. That is for sure. Bit of assistance there. Gets him going again. And back on track. He's dropped down out of the top five, though. Final corner on the inside there for the 499. And it's another victory here for Tamao Moring. Absolutely epic man to watch on a 65 cc. And the class of the field tonight, that is for sure. Taking the victory relatively easily there and winning out over Kudzwai and Chris. Victor comes through for fourth place, beating out Matisse Moring. Timoteo gets up for sixth place. And then it was Alroy Shimonwara coming through there just ahead of Kyle Collette, Tebright, and Jaden Kerwin in the top ten. And then something completely different in the halftime break, getting a chance for the crowd to see not only the fireworks display up in the sky, but a bit of freestyle motocross action. Dale Burmeister brought a couple of South African boys over with some freestyle FMX entertainment.
into the 85 cc's now and it's going to be another big fight bauer kenzo valsecki and ludwaba will ludwaba go for his fourth or fifth hole shot in a row it looks like he might be there for it yes he is the king of the hole shot is Cabello Nudwaba, but inside line looks like he might have just been squeezed out. Yeah, I think Ricardo Bauer might have just got through there and shown him how to get through. Yes, it's Bauer from Ledwaba. Valsecchi alongside him heading up towards turn four. Two lines through turn four, as you can see, an inside rut and an outside rut have now formed there permanently. But Ricardo Bauer now trying to get away from the hard charging South Africans. And uh, Ferez Kenzo. A fellow European rider who is looking for a chance now to be slightly higher up than what he has been all week long. It's Friday night. It's down to the wire time. It's the last bit of Supercross action coming for the 85 cc's. So it's all do or die time. These are important points because on Sunday it makes it a bit more difficult. It's a longer track. It's certainly going to be a lot hotter. It's cool conditions here this evening. Ideal motocross and Supercross conditions to be racing in. And Cabello Rodwaba will tell you all about that as he gets overtaken by the hard-charging Trent Valsecchi. Valsecchi! Oh, Ledwaba just gets a little bit out of shape and a little bit wrong. Picks the bike up. And King, C King Cabello, unfortunately, not going to have it all go his way here in this heat. But it's certainly going the way of Ricardo Bauer out front. In the back in the pack, you can see them fighting and continuing to fight hard. The 3-2-6 there is for Kenzo. And he's there with Valsecchi. The two of them banging bars as they came out of that corner. It was a nice thing we heard from Brian Zhu and a couple of the riders speaking about the fact that there is a technical aspect to the circuit. There are different lines at the track, making it difficult to pass, but you can find opportunities to pass. And then there's that very flat-out section that we just saw the freestyle motocross ramp stuck out on, and they're loving that part. Getting to open up those motorcycles in full flight. So it's Bauer, Kenzo, and Valsecchi looking for a chance now to wrap it all up. Cabello Ludwaba is back up and riding, but he's a bit further back than what he wanted to be. Down the outside goes the 292. And amongst the back markers there, just putting back markers between himself and the charge for second and third. But he's now, you can see, just rolling off, taking it easy. He knows he's got it in the bag. And Ricardo Bauer going to just cruise to the line. Perfectly done from this young man and certainly a man to watch out for in the future of Supercross and Motocross. And hopefully he'll be back next year for some more Supercross action as the flag comes out for the 85 cc's. Second place is Kenzo. And Valsecchi comes through for third with Cabello Ludwaba not too far behind there for the top four. Tamara Roering for his first time on 85, finished up in the top five ahead of Vanas. And then it was Lucas Collette, Willem Krauser, Benji Dornan, and another run there from Junior Paco in the top 10. The one, two, five, Brad Pack now lined up. Final heat of action for them here on Friday night. Gates drop, and we're heading towards turn one. Is it Bucko for the whole shot? Emmanuel Bucko did not ride on Wednesday. Rider down in the background. We'll try to pick up on who that was, but it looks like Bucko didn't quite get the whole shot. He's in second place as they came out, but he eventually moves to fourth ahead of Van Bake as they head through the rhythm section for the first time. Jordan Van Bake is up into second place. Good start there coming out of Nicolas Clamart and then Tariq Shelton on his tail. Emil Cusset did not get the start he wanted. That is for sure. The Zimbabwean rider is going to have to work hard here to try and close that gap down to the top end of this field. They come out of Isuzu Corner, heading towards the finish line jump. And the first five riders all split by less than one and a half seconds. That is how tight it's going to be for these one two fives. They're not going to hold anything back here to try and hang on. It is Crusay who's moved up one position. So him and Shelton fighting for four and five at the moment. Bucko trying to get away from the pack and lead for a comfortable margin. Shelton closing the gap down again here on Emile Crusay. Right on his tail as they come out of that rhythm section. A little bit of a tough little corner to come out of because you go straight into almost a wall jump coming out of that one. Out front though, is there a change up for the lead? No, but second place could be looking for a change as Nicolas Clamar starts to close in on the back end of Jordan van Beek. Shelton sliding into Isuzu, almost up the inside of Emile Cousset. Ferez Kenzo hasn't had the start he wanted. He's out of that top five. Kind of expected him to be a little bit higher up, but I think he might have been the rider who actually went down. He got back up again. He's now trying to push through the field as quickly as possible. There you can see our top six heading down and towards what is going to be the final part of this last ditch effort for 125s on the Supercross side of Summer Series 2023. Definitely some maneuvering happening here. Oh, it is on for second and third. Crusade hanging on for life right now as Clement is all up. He's on the inside. Oh, Nicolas Clement using that inside and the step up jump. And it looks like he might be able to get past. Emile has gone on the inside again to go defensive. He cuts back at Emile, tries to block him, doesn't get there. Oh, great Supercross action. That is Supercross to perfection there from those two riders. And Jordan Van Fake fortunately has been a huge, huge gainer from this battle. 
because uh, they're fighting so hard, they're actually slowing each other down. And there's a block pass. A little touch inside line coming out of Clamar. And Emil Crusade goes down. Here comes Tariq Shelton. Shelton's going to get through. Will we see Kenzo get through as well? No. Emil keeps out Kenzo. Flags out. And it's Emmanuel Bucco for the win. And that's a very big crowd favorite for that victory. Second place is Jordan van Vaak. The South African comes through there to rip up the field and beats up Nicholas Clamar, who managed to hang on for third after that little touch between himself and Crusade. Tariq, Tariq Shelton got through for fourth. Kenzo comes through for sixth. And it's Reese Govey, Pike, and Bauer, your top 10. Back into action now for the final heat of Friday night's Vets and Masters. Another stack gate, including double T this time. Yes, Trevor Thixon is back in the house. He wasn't there on Wednesday night. He's definitely here tonight. Inside line, though, was another man who wasn't here on Wednesday night. Warren Thorne getting the whole shot. I mean, he's the man who's put a huge amount of work into building this track and uh, getting it ready for the international riders. Rider down, though, unfortunately, looks like that might have been uh, Zanon Ekron. Zanon Ekron, I think, crashing out there and uh, having to pick the bike up. Watch out for uh, Fraser. Scotty Fraser had a fantastic evening on Wednesday. He'll definitely be looking to do it once again and maybe get back up onto that podium for the veteran side of things. Lofty Fastfelt, Dale Holiday, and Trevor Thixton will be fighting hard for honours in the Masters. And these guys hold nothing back. There's no doubt about it. The nice, the nice thing about this as well, some of them are actually out there, <laughs> and you'll see they've got headlights on. They're running their enduro bikes in this category too, which is always fun to see. 14 pushing hard. That is Doug Millar here. Definitely a man to watch out for and certainly a man who can run at the front end. Trying to close down there on the 100. And Scotty Fraser and himself had an epic battle. Mark uh, also had a big one with him. Thompson. Thompson and Millar on Wednesday night were banging bars big time. It looks like more of the same now. Now we're getting to see whether or not Dell Holiday can hang on. Lofty Fastfelt looks like he might have taken the lead here of the Masters category. But there's no worries at all here for Warren Thorne as he takes it from the veteran's point of view. Thompson's going to come through for a second. And is it going to be Lofty? No, it's Fraser. Scotty Fraser coming through there nicely. But there you go. Warren Thorne wins out over Thompson and Malore. And Scott Fraser, the top four being the vets. Lofty Fastfelt wins out the Masters ahead of Dale Holiday. And it's Omarod, Watson, Pox and Zeman, your top ten. Back into the ladies and the last bit of action for Supercross for the ladies category now. Jadine and Cheyenne have basically shared the honours with Caitlin Parks. Taddy Nyamaka Budzwa has been in there as well and has uh, Kayla Nesbitt. But it looks like there's only four of them out there for this one. So a couple of riders just uh, maybe hanging on for Sunday for the Supercross, uh, changing to motocross. The motocross track is a daunting one. Let's have a look and see what's going to happen at the front end. The two sisters out front though, it is Jadine from Cheyenne. And right on their tail, it's Caitlin Parks, 118. And Caitlin Parks will definitely looking for another victory. She's already taken two away from the two uh, sisters, and they've shared the rest of the honours of the rest of the pack. Chaddy, Yamaka Vudzwa, all on her own, some there back in fourth place, but hanging on to score valuable points. Remember, it's overall points that will win out the Summer Series by the time we wrap things up on Sunday. So it is Pegasus Racing and Monster Yamaha's one and two. And it is the KTM there in third place of Caitlin Parks to try and close them down but doesn't look like she's got an answer here in this third and final heat of the uh, ladies category so it's going to be the 7-7 of J. Dean to beat out Shea and they've shared the honours along with Caitlin Parks and Tuddy in fourth good effort though Nesbitt and Young will be back on Sunday um, yeah I went well obviously um, had some practice at Thor Minios last year with Supercross so wasn't too like stressed about it um, but yeah track was sick both nights were sick, fans were cool, um, and yeah, I managed to pull three out of the four hole shots, and yeah, just onto the motocross. Welcome back to action from the Better Brands Petroleum Summer Series 2023. The crowds are here in full effect now, and it's uh, the final night of Supercross, that's why they've come. They've come to see MX3s doing battle for the last time tonight. In the gates, ready to go. Will Sasha Mitchell try and get that hole shot again? Dudney looking good as well for a possibility of that inside line. Oh, he gets tagged slightly though on that inside. So it drops him back a little bit. And it is Sasha Mitchell who hole shots. Or does he? No, he doesn't. He tries to get up and around from the outside to the inside. It didn't quite work out. And up front, it's Dylan Zanon. Dylan Zanon with the hole shot. Who expected that? Camel Law up into about fourth place at this point as he comes around the outside there. You see him coming through there on the Yamaha Marine Center. <laughs> YZ and up to second only just getting through there on Kevin Morgan 
So Kevin Morgan and Dylan Zanon, those are definitely two riders I would not have put at the front end. Now you've got uh, Munyaradzi Bako in there too, and they're <laughs> into a mix where they're not usually participating. Jordan Dutney's always there, and he's now starting to come through. Easy to pick up because he's got that bright orange four kit on, and you can spot him a mile away. Sasha Mitchell all in red, hanging on for uh, dear life at this point, because I think that dear life might be uh, coming to a very short time of it, because here they come, and they're coming through thick and fast. Zanin there as well, staying in the mix here with Mitchell. Mitchell about to be caught and passed. Yes, there we go. One, two, and three. Mitchell has had enough. He's like, okay, I've done my uh, Brad and Nassus. I'm good enough to have that one lap, and I'm going to just stick it out now and ride to the end. Here we go. The fight's on for the lead. It's Jordan Dudney. Can he find a way past? Not yet. Dudney looking for that win. He wants the victory big time. He wants to take some good points into Sunday's motocross. Inside line might be the way to go, and it is. Uses a step up, and they are side by side. No, it's not yet, though. He's not past Zanin. Dylan Zanin keeping you very honest. Zanin and Dudney going out at you for uh, the final heat with one lap to go. Oh, what a way to come off the finish line jump. Flat out and landing on the down slope perfectly, carrying the speed and the momentum and taking the lead. And with that, he pulls away from Dylan Zanin. I think Dylan Zanin said, right, I've had enough. It's all yours. I'm done. I got the whole shot. No one can take that away from me. And no one's going to take the win away from Jordan Dudney. Coming through for the victory. Zanin's going to be second. Camelor into third place. But I think Camelor might be heading into the motocross with a little bit of a lead in the uh, overall standing so far. Bucko comes through for fourth. Kevin Morgan in five. Daniel West ahead of Sasha Mitchell. Hewer and Orchard. And Barry Longhurst into the top ten. Good effort. Let's get back to that uh, top end of the premier classes. MX2's first and foremost. Final heat of Supercross. Let's see who's going to have what it takes to get this whole shot. Who is your money on? It could go anyway. Oh, and it could go wrong as well in the background. Someone getting caught up in the loamy sand. A couple of guys going high and wide. Not Tariq Shelton's point of view. He got dropped right to the back of the pack. But once again, it's Pierre Guppion who leads things out. Good start there from Brian Zhu. Much better start this time. And he's already up to the lead. He gets to the front almost into turn five and sorts it all out. A fantastic start coming out of Diane Manuel as well, as always. But it is Brian Zhu who leads out, and he is now going to try and get away from this field and leave them in his wake. The violin rider is what he's known as. His dad manufactures violins, and he is a top violinist himself. But he's making uh, <laughs> orchestral maneuvers in the dark here at the moment, that's for sure. There's no doubt about it that he is the class of this field on that 250. No one seems to have an answer. Austin Black putting pressure onto the back end. Watch out in the background as well. Slowly but surely, we're seeing uh, Bonaficio come through there. We didn't really mention Andrea Bonaficio too much in the first heat, but uh, he wasn't really up there and hasn't really got to grips with things just yet. Expecting big things from him on Sunday in the motocross. Same thing can be said coming out of the uh, Predator, John Omlini. Starting to just get into that rhythm, getting settling down. Well, well, some of them settling down, some of them putting on a show. What a massive whip there. I think that was coming out of either Chatfield or Franklin, showing the boys how it's done there and uh, giving the crowd a bit of a thrill as well. Brian Zhu, though, is on the way for perfect standings in terms of Supercross. It'll be five out of five for them. Remember, they only had two heats on Wednesday night due to a couple of issues that they had at the circuit. So those two heat wins on Wednesday and three heats here tonight are certainly going to put him into a good stead and a good standing for Sunday's motocross. If he can continue that, it's good stuff. Oh, two riders down. <laughs> what a recovery there from Ben Franklin. <laughs> 360 spin, what is he? <laughs> is he on a, on a little speedway bike there coming out of that turn? Managed to hang on to it and keep it going. Look at the pressure, though, coming from Austin Black on Goupillon. He wants a way past Austin Black. Definitely looking to beat the Frenchman here. The American wants a way past, and he's looking for it on every opportunity. On the flat-out stuff as well. Look at that. Not holding in the back. He just grabs a handful, slams it up inside. There you go. Block pass. Done deal. So that is the way you go into a Supergrass whip section. Get through and get the, uh, the job done before you get into the whips and then try and carry the momentum and the rhythm. Oh, landing on the flat is Goupion trying to come back at him. Pierre Goupion putting the pressure on and he is pushing hard here to try and get back at Austin Black. A little scrub it up there over the little uh, step up and now heading towards Isuzu. Final corner and they've got no answer to Brian Zhu. He's disappeared at the front end, but there's a huge battle still on. Oh, is that Bonaficio gone down? It is. Bonaficio's gone down, so the little Italian having some problems there on the Better Brands Petroleum KTM. This is Zhu in amongst the uh, mid pack of the back markers, but heading to the checkered flag and no worries whatsoever there for him. And it doesn't look like we're going to see Goupion get back at Black. No, he's not. He's not going to hang on. It looks like it's going to be Black for second. 
We've got a couple of laps to go. Let's see what he can do. Maybe those back markers play into his hands. Go past that big crowd on the, on the grandstand and they are just loving all the Supercross action that has been provided here tonight as well as all the off-track and uh, additional uh, entertainment that's been provided here at Summer Series. The FMX was good. The fire show, of course, the fireworks were amazing. And this is the kind of fireworks we get in the closing stages of a Supercross heat. Black at it. And here comes Amlimi for the ride as well. John Amlimi trying to find a way past. Can he maybe spoil the day there for Pierre Goupillon? He's going to give him a run, that's for sure. Brian Zhu to the line. No worries at all for him. He has pulled a massive margin over the rest of the pack, and that's another victory. That is five out of five for him. So perfect score so far for Brian Zhu. And it is Austin Black who hangs on. Kupion just in third and not too far behind was the Predator, John Ermlimi, the South African, getting into that mix. Watch for the high fives here. Yeah, they enjoyed that. There's no doubt about it. And so did the crowd. Coming through there, all of the crowd loving life. And it's Zhu from Black, Kupion and Ermlimi. Jackson Hadlow was there in fifth place. I think he was the man who was actually whipping it over the tabletop. Manuel and Hugo, Chatfield, Franklin, and Jordan Van Bake on the 747 and 10. Friday night was uh, absolutely awesome. Managed to get a whole shot in the first race and end up second. Second race, I got quite a bad start, but I still managed to come back to fifth place. And in the last race, I ended up fourth place, just missing out on third. Uh, but yeah, I had a great night, awesome racing. And more awesome racing on Sunday expected from the Predator. Let's see what his brother can do now in the MX1s. Five second board, gates about to drop. Who's going to have what it takes to get that whole shot? Will we see a Zimbabwean? And maybe Captain Marvel will sneak through. Or was it once again going to be the two Frenchmen fighting hard? It is. Oh, going down though in a big way. A massive moment there for one of the riders and crashing out there in a huge, huge one. That was the number eight of Michael Kratzer. Rame is up into what is about fifth place there, tucked in behind Brian Zhu, who's out there on the 250. And speaking of 250s, Hadlow's out there as well. So Jackson Hadlow trying to get uh, value for money here. <laughs> to get as much racing as possible out on the Supercross track. Have a look at Jaden Nashville. He's up to third place. Tucked in behind Anthony Boudin and Maxine Dupre. And the Zimbabwean captain is uh, flying the flag high here for the local supporters. He's ahead of Ramey. He's ahead of Hadlow. He's ahead of Kratzer. Kratzer's back up and riding. Watch out in the background as well for the Husqvarna coming through there of uh, Josh Mnimi. Definitely looking to try and get a little bit higher up than what he's finished so far over the last two nights. But we'll watch out for him certainly on Sunday in the motocross. Regan Wasmuth is alongside him as they come into the rhythm section. Hadlow going high and wide, looking for a way past on him. Mnimi and Mnimi shuts it all. But Jackson Hadlow trying to find a way through. Couldn't find it there. And Lee saw him coming and definitely was not going to let him pass. Here we go as they come through and out of that whoop section to the very fast left-hander. It goes into two lines, one outside, one inside. The inside line has got to step up onto the top of that step-up jump. The other one's got a smoother line, but it's not quite as quick. And Hadlow! Oh, we mentioned him earlier on the 250 starting to whip. He's doing it in the uh, MX1s as well now, putting on a show there for the crowd. Speaking of the show though, Kawasaki led out front here from Anthony Boudal is certainly a man to watch out for. Maxine Dupre coming off multiple victories in European and World Championships and just cannot run with the pace of Anthony Boudal here this evening. No one's able to run with the pace of the man in third place either from this incredible field of 38 international and national champions all on board. They can't catch the national champion and captain of Zimbabwe's motocross team, Jada Nashville there for third. Go Rame under a bit of pressure, and the pressure's coming from that 411 of Amlini. And they're coming down to the closing stages here. It's a move on here as well, coming out of Daniel Thornhill. The, uh, the Brit is up into what is fourth place, and the fight's on for fifth between Hadlow and Amlini. Side by side, they go slightly different lines out of that wall jump. And coming to the line, the Kawasaki's done it all right. So it is going to be another victory here for Anthony Boudin. That's exactly what he needed going into Sunday's motocross. And a big heel clicker from him as well over the line. And a nice whip from Maxi Dupre as well. That's the way to wrap it up. Boot on Maxi. And then it was uh, Ashwell from Thornhill. Rame in fifth. Hadlow hung on for sixth, beating out Kratzer. And Lini dropped down to eighth. And Wasmuth beats out Jimmy Margotson for the top ten. So we've had two days of Supercross done and dusted. Um, really, really cool uh, event that we've had here. Um, super challenging uh, with the international field. So it's been really cool to race the guys um, that I've raced actually in the past, some of them. So yeah, it was awesome to be on the line with them. Um, obviously the, the pace is really high, so just have to get used to that. And we'll take that onto the motocross. On the next show, we'll be focusing on the motocross, stepping away from the Supercross where the riders and fans were very entertained and put on a big show. The gate drops on Sunday. We'll be carrying all the action from Summer Series.